De regreso aquí en Auto 060 y vamos a hablar ahora de un tema muy interesante sobre la electrificación de los autos. Uh, we're gonna talk. Uh, we're gonna switch back to English again because we're gonna have a very interesting topic about uh, the new need that uh, it's uh, appearing everywhere for charging stations for the electric cars. And for that, we're gonna talk to Dimitrios Papadogonos. Uh, did I say it right, Dimitrios? How are you? Good morning. Good morning, and yes, you did say it right. Excellent. So. Um, uh, Dimitrios represents a company called Charge Point, right? And um, uh, can you please tell us about the company first, and, and then we go over uh, some uh, pretty cool uh, recommendations that you have uh, come up with uh, for people who own or, or thinking of owning electric cars. Sure. Well, Charge Point, we're a Silicon Valley-based uh, technology company, and we're actually the largest. Uh, EV charging company in the world, and what we do is we make charging stations so people can charge their electric cars, but we also um, have created the world's largest network that connects all those chargers together so that a property owner who owns a charging station can manage that charging station that he has, so it will allow him to, for all our, our, our cloud-based services, allow that property owner to manage who gets to charge on the station, manage pricing, manage the energy being dispensed. So it gives them total control and flexibility over it. And then we're also like a social media company because we make really cool, cool apps that allow drivers to find and locate uh, where our stations are. It'll even tell you in real time what stations are available so you can actually get to a station that's free. Yeah, because uh, even though that technology is great in the cars, and it's improving, I mean, uh, some cars are getting now 100, 200, miles 300 miles even with uh, with some uh, new batteries like the Tesla uh, there's still some anxiety and some people uh, still doubt about thinking of uh, when they think about buying an electric car because of that I mean most people don't even know where the charging stations are right yeah well we we're, we're the largest network in the world and we have over 15,000 places to charge in the United States now and um, so you're starting to see stations in more and more places wherever you drive But, uh, you know, really what's happening is it, it, people, it, it's not so much about range anxiety anymore because as people buy electric cars, uh, you know, first of all, they always have the option to, to charge at home. But what they're really doing when they buy an electric car is they realize that much like your iPhone or something, you know, wherever you, wherever you go, you want to plug in and top it up. So people aren't in a situation where they, you know, it's not like gas. You don't drive until your tank is empty yeah. and all of a sudden go and look to charge. It's really the way you look like how you treat an electronic device. Wherever there's a plug, you'll just go ahead and plug it in. So what EV drivers are doing is wherever they're parked for more than an hour, and that basically means where they eat, shop, work, and play, uh, they look for a plug and they plug in. Yeah, uh, and for one, one other thing is, uh Uh, there's not a, a clear, at least for me, a clear price for charging. So can you tell, tell, tell us a little bit about that? I mean, how much does it cost to charge a car? Yeah, so it, it really depends. Um, one of the things about our business model and why we've been so successful, we have a 70% share of all the public network chargers out there, is really simple. Every business is going to want to charge a different price or manage their charging uh, in a way that works for them. So for instance, if you're, if you're a workplace, you're really putting in EV chargers because it's a great employee perk and it's a way to attract uh, new talent into your company. So you tend to offer it for free. Um, if you're a retail mall, you tend to offer it for free as well because you want to attract in customers. But once the customer's been in your store for a couple hours, you kind of want them to leave and make room for the next customer, right? Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll give, it, give you parking free for the first two hours, but after two hours, it goes up to $5 an hour or something like that. And if you're a parking garage operator, well, you're in business to make money for parking. So, of course, you charge as much as the market will bear for electricity. So it really does depend on what the business is um, and what the business needs are. And they, in, when you deal with charge points, that property owner gets to set the price that works for his, for his business. That said, most people, most charging stations in the U.S. are still on the charge point network are still free. About 60% of our stations, uh, the property owners do not charge anything for, for the electricity. So they're giving away the electricity for free. Yeah, that's pretty. And more and more, 
drivers are coming, property owners are, are now thinking about what is the appropriate price to charge and, and you'll start seeing a modest fee uh, probably um, you know in the near future. Yeah, uh, free is always good, but I guess in any case it's still cheaper than gas, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's the other thing. Driving on electricity can is, is as little as a tenth of the price uh, of gas. And most places, even if they charge, they're charging you somewhere in the, this may not make a lot of sense to listeners yet, but they're charging you somewhere in the 20 to 30 cents a kilowatt hour. But that, even at that price, that's a quarter of the cost of gas. It's yeah. the equivalent of charging you a dollar a gallon. Yeah, that's so pretty amazing. Uh, really, really cheap. Yeah, a friend of mine just posted on Facebook, I think it was last week, that she put gas uh, in her uh, Chevy Bolt for the first time like in seven months, which is something really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dimitris, you came up with a pretty a pretty cool list about uh, five tips to avoid charge rage and uh, congestion at workplace and other charge stations, which I think it's something that is going to come up and maybe still already coming up and that's why you came up with it. So can we go uh, through those five points, uh, please? So scale up sure, is the first absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah, so what we, what we discovered is, you know, we have, we've got over 2,000 customers um, and the majority of our customers are workplace customers. So we, we've got some experience with um, what the media is calling charge rage, which is simply really nothing more than, you know, people coming to work, driving their EVs and looking for a place to charge and there aren't enough places to charge their car. So there's a few things that workplaces are, you know, are doing. Um, you know, first and foremost, uh, workplaces have really began to understand that what they need is to have the right amount of charges for the right amount of cars. And that's to have one charger for every two cars. And the reason for that is simple, because the, the, the natural behavior in the office is people tend to either go out for lunch or at least they're free and available to move their cars at lunch. Yeah. So what naturally happens is people who get charging stations in the morning plug in, at lunchtime, they move their car, and people who didn't get a charging station in the morning can then plug in. So you really only need one charger for every two cars. So companies are really um, aligning their charging offering to that to that behavior. And as more cars come, they just add more chargers to keep that ratio at two to one. Another thing that's becoming uh, really popular is um, what's called the valet bowl, which is simply if you're an EV driver, when you come in through the front desk, you just leave your key in a bowl and, and basically you say, look, when my car is uh, charged in a couple of hours, uh, you know, someone, someone can move it and uh, put their car in the spot. So that's wow, leave it, leaving the keys, uh, huh? <laughs> that sounds a little bit risky to some people, I would think. Yeah, well, typically in, in, in some companies, it's, it's usually a designated sort of valet person who'll do it, so someone will volunteer for the day, or the receptionist or the admin will do it, or yeah, so, so someone sort of takes that role. So, And it tends to be in companies with the more predefined, smaller parking lot, so it's you know not like your car got moved blocks away and you can't find it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you know, right within two or three spots of, of where it was. So another one is uh, get on the list uh, and it's just like, uh, as you were saying, you also are like a social media a network. So this is part of that? Yeah, you have a little uh, community forming with EV drivers within companies. So they do interesting things like they create an email distribution list of EV drivers where one person can write and say, hey, I really need to plug in, can anyone move their car? Um, so there's that type of thing. So it's really like a little community inside the office where the EV drivers can talk with each other and engage in cooperative behavior. Another thing that's happened is people treat, uh, some companies are just starting to treat uh, parking spots like a conference room, and you, you actually can go into your Microsoft office or whatever you're using and, and book that parking spot like, uh, like a conference room. Yeah. So, uh, Dimitri, so obviously the, the, the electric cars and plug-in hybrids are not still very big in terms of volume. I mean, when we're talking about 16 million cars all in the U.S., I mean, the percentage is still pretty small. But this is going to keep growing, right? So, what's the, what's the, the vision that you guys have in, in terms of, of uh, expanding these, uh, these networks? And, and they're going to have to become like gas stations. They're going to have to be pretty much everywhere, right? Yeah, I think a better way to think, you're right. Um, the way we think about it is um, we, don't, we don't really talk about gas stations because charging your electric car will never be like a gas station. You'll, again, you'll never get your car down the empty and then stand for yeah. three minutes 
and fill your car up. It's going to be more like parking meters because what's convenient about the with about EV cars is that you charge your car at your destination. It's not on your way to your destination. So really, the time it takes to charge your car can be thought of as only a few seconds. If you get to work, you get out of your car, you plug your car in, that takes five seconds to plug your car in, then you go to your office, and it doesn't matter how long it takes to charge your car because you're sitting in your office for a few hours before you're gonna move your car again. So we tend to think of it more as parking meters because it's where people are parked. And yes, we're gonna need hundreds of thousands of more of these as the, as the cars come. Right now, there's just over 175,000 EVs on the road, but by 2020, there will be over 3 million electric cars on the road. So the growth is, is just exponential, and um, companies are really scrambling to adjust and, and keep up to them. Yeah, so you're going to be busy, I guess, for the next few years. <laughs> <laughs> We, we hope so. We think yeah. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for the environment, but more importantly, um, you know, drivers are discovering electric cars are actually better cars. There, this is uh, Dimit absolutely amazing. Yeah, Dimitris Papadogonas uh, from Charpoint. Thank you very much for information. And very quickly, we're running out of time. Uh, a a webpage where we can find more information about it. Absolutely. Just go to chargepoint.com and we've got all kinds of great information to help readers figure out what's the right car for them to drive and where charging stations are located. Excellent. Thank you very much, Demetrius. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.